Hey guys, this is Deb Joyce Meek from Delight of My Art going live after Christmas. Hope you had a good Christmas. Today we're playing with brand new product from the upcoming spring 2023 mini catalog. And this is actually a free set from Celebration coming up. So here's a sneak peek at that. It's so cute. It's called Adorable Owls. We've got three little owl images and then three little cute little sayings. So what I made with this when I was playing with it, I did these cute little magnetic bookmarks. There's a little magnet in the bottom and the top here, and then it will just snap to your page. And they're so cute. It says, my friend, who toot, you're so cute. I thought they were really cute. So let's go ahead and put these together. And I'm using also some paper that is brand new also from celebration so another free item reaching down to grab my pack here i've already uh chopped into it but it's another huge freebie dandy designs 12 by 12 dsp there's 48 12 by 12 sheets in here it's massive so this is free with any hundred dollar purchase and this stamp set is free with any fifty dollar purchase so there's a bunch of products that you can choose as your free gift during celebration. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I've got my adorable owls all mounted on my block. And I've got my little my friend. When I forgot, hoot hoot, you're so cute. We can't forget that one in the middle. So I'll grab one more block here. All right, so I'll put this to the side. Now these were the patterns out of that paper pack that I used already. So I had, I picked out the nerdiest, uh, plattiest looking ones that I could find some nice small patterns for these. You can see this cute little purple plaid, this little one with the blue and the teal. This one was with little check marks with little, the granny apple green. Hi Vesta. And then this one was so cute too. So these were the ones that I picked out from that big paper pack. I'm actually going to pivot and use another new paper pack from the annual, or not the annual, the new spring catalog. This one um, is paired with one of the, um, the Valentine's papers. It's a big bunch of paper. So there's uh, like a red, let's see. Sweet sorbet, petal pink, mint macaron, and balmy blue in here. So half of it's the blue and green and then the other half is the other one but there's so many cute little plaids in here so this one is a mint one and since I don't have that color in here yet we're gonna play with mint so let's go ahead and push these aside I'll be playing with this mint paper we're gonna need some thick basic white and some regular basic white I'll be doing my stamping and my coloring on the thin one and I'll just take my face off so you can see it a little bit better there we go. All right, and I'm going to need Memento black ink because we're gonna be coloring with some blends. So I'm going to be using for the beak here, I have the Mango Melody, light and dark. I'll be using Crumb Cake for the, the face and the tummy here. And I'm gonna be using the light soft suede for his darker parts. I am going to throw in this light gray granite. You can see with the eyes here, I matched the little bow tie, but I didn't want him to have like scary red eyes. <laughs> so the eyes are a little bit dulled with this gray granite light marker. So I thought that was kind of a fun um, option to kind of, he's got nice blue eyes, but they're not so bright and scary little violet. Isn't that cute? Anyway. All right. So that's why I brought this one in. And then we'll do the bow tie and the eyes in the matching color of whatever paper we choose. So let's get started. This is, uh, I didn't prep uh, ahead of time any of these pieces because I wanted you to see how I made this, this piece here, which is longer than the die that we have for it. So I wanted to show you this. These are the seasonal labels that I used for this because I thought this was a nice um, die set that was a big open label. I picked this one, the second largest of the labels. Now, as you can see, this is a lot bigger than that. So I'll show you how, 
how I did that. All right, so let's do that first. That's, this is the thick one. This is the thin one. We'll put the, that one aside for a second and we'll work on our tag piece. So I'll bring out my Stampin' Cut and Emboss Mini. Oh, Debbie, thank you for sharing. All right, so I'll put my plates in here. And actually, before we do this, we need to do some scoring. What happened to my trimmer? Well, I had everything ready in here except for my trimmer, which I think I left in the other room. Anyway, what we're supposed to do is score this, and then we're going to cut it. I'm actually going to go run and get my trimmer. Sorry about that. Just a second. Here, <laughs> I thought I was so prepared. Okay. So real quick, we'll take this trimmer here and we'll see how long this piece is. So you even have some paper in there. So this is about four inches long. We don't need it quite that long, but we'll just go ahead and score it right about there. Okay, just like that. So it doesn't matter if it's not even, it's a little bit shorter on one side than the other side. That is okay. What I'm gonna do is take my die here and instead of cutting on the entire folded piece, I'm gonna push it up off just so that that little rounded part is not going to uh, make this one a little bit rounded at the top. We want it to be straight up and down. Okay, so I'm gonna tape that there with some washi tape and then we're gonna run it through double. So we're gonna go back and forth a little bit just to make sure that it cuts through because we're cutting through both two layers. It's gonna be a little thick. But this should be fun, doing a magnetic bookmark. All right, so I have it even in there and then we're gonna just run that through. If you don't have this stamp and cut and emboss mini machine, you are in luck because it is part of our awesome joining special to get the starter kit for all of Celebration. You get it at a steal. I think it's like $30 plus you get an extra amount of stuff to, to pick out. So pretty crazy. All right. So now see, I've got this giant tag here folded in the middle. Pretty cool. Should be the same size. Yes. Okay. Good. I did it right. All right. So here's our little tag. Let's go ahead and stamp my. No, we won't do that yet. We'll do. We'll do the owl part. We'll stamp the owl and color him. If you're watching live, please say hi. I see Vesta and Debbie are watching but I see other people are secretly watching. If you don't want to say hi, that's okay, but just know that I see you and I appreciate you. All right, so we've got our cute little owl here, and that's all that we need to stamp and color. Do you guys have the blends? Do you love the blends? I am in love with coloring with these blends. As soon as I had a small set, I started with, I think I started with daffodil and um, coral, and old olive, which was a good starting point. But I um, quickly started adding more to each order so that I could have all the colors. I still have to get the um, skin tone ones, all the new brown ones, which are really cute too. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of the dark. Can you guys see this? On the lower part of the beak, and maybe the bottom part of the foot because it looks like a little shadow. And then kind of blend that out. Okay, I'm gonna show this up close so you can see kind of what we're doing here. So I just colored the beak and the feet in Mango Melody. Now we're gonna go with light crumb cake and do his face. 
I guess it could be a girl, her face, his face. I love coloring with these because it doesn't leave lines. Everything just kind of blends like the name suggests. So easy. Let me know if you love the blends. And if you haven't tried them yet, ooh, just order like one one set, maybe like a, a brown or something. You could do like an animal or maybe just a yellow and a green. You could do a flower and you're going to be blown away. All of them come with light and dark colors. All right, so with this, I'm actually going to um, take the same one. I think it's the same one and just kind of do... I think I'm going to do the dark. I think this might be too dark though. When I'm coloring, I like to just kind of scribble over here and see if that's the one I want to use. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So I'm going to do um, a little bit of a shadow here, kind of where his face kind of concaves a little bit. I can't remember if I just, you can layer the light on top of the light if you want a more subtle change. And I can't remember if I did that or if I did this. I might have done but you can kind of blend that line a little bit and give him a little bit of a shadow here underneath his tie and there's his face and now we want to use this light soft suede I'm going to use the small tip just so I can get in all these little tiny detail areas This, these do um, bleed just a little bit when you color with them. So you want to go almost up to the lines, but not quite up to it because the color will kind of continue to bleed out a little bit. And it does actually bleed through your paper. So if your surface is a nice wood table make sure that you have a protective piece of copy paper or something under there it doesn't bleed through a ton like like a sharpie would but you just want to protect your work surface so i'm just coloring this one color here i didn't want this to be too dark I do like coloring. I find it just fun. And with these blends, I just make it easy to make everything look, look like a professional did it. All right, um, before I finish, I'm going to add a little bit more of the same exact color here, just under his head. So it looks like he's got a little bit of a shadow from his head there. So let's show that real quick. He's looking so cute, right? All right, so what we wanted to do was add this color. This is light gray granite to the eyes. So I'm actually gonna use the thicker tip. I feel like the thicker tip is a little bit lighter than the thin tip, even on the same exact marker. Um, so I feel like that gives me a little bit, even more color variation. So you might want to just scribble on your on your paper to test it out. So I filled the eyes with that gray. And now I'm going to take my color here. I'll do the bow tie first. We'll do the light mint macaron. Oh, he's so cute. And then I'll do the dark one. We'll do the thin side here and just these little these little um, marks, a lot of times you can just put, add the dark to the little shadowy lines that they already put in the drawings, which is helpful. And you see I'm closing them after every use because you do want to make sure that you close them. I'll use this. Side. All right, so I'm just going to blend. because they, they're alcohol markers so they will dry out. Okay, so there's my little bow tie. Now we're going to add color to his eyes. I'm going to add 
with the thin side, you can see the little thin line here and the thick line here, with the thin side of the dark one that matches the tie. Just little dots on the inner corners of his eye. I'm not going to fill that whole space. I just want to have it right next to that black um, part of his eye. I feel like this makes it look more eyeball-y. <laughs> That's a word. So you have a little bit of that gray kind of peeking out from behind there. But he looks, now he looks like he's perky and awake. Okay, one more thing. And I feel like I use this color a lot, but you wouldn't think of it. The petal pink for the inside of his ears. This is a great color also for um, putting little cheek dots. If you want to make little animals um, look like they're smiling. So there we've got his ears colored. Okay, so now we can cut him out. All right, and my scissors are right here somewhere, supposedly. Oh, right here. Okay. So if you are a fan of fussy cutting, let me know. Or if you hate it, let me know. <laughs> it's either a love-hate, I feel like, for a lot of people. All right, so the trick to fussy cutting is keeping your scissors kind of pointed the same direction and moving the paper with your other hand. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hold the scissors with that hand. I'm going to come in at, find an angle where I can just kind of cut right in. So I'm going to come in with the, at these ears here. So then I'm going to keep a thin border of white and just keep turning my paper while I kind of hold the scissors at the same angle. Once I get to a side, I'll just snip that off. It makes it a little bit easier to come in from the next little angle. So nobody commented about fuzzy cutting yet. Do you love it or do you hate it? <laughs> I think it's fun. I think it adds an extra element. Everything looks a little bit nicer when you fussy cut it, although it is work. So if you don't love to do it, you don't have to. You can always just um, stamp right on a circle or a, another shape, a punched shape, and then that'll be um, what you, you know, put on dimensionals or something on your project. But Vesta says it's okay to fussy cut easier than die cutting. Yeah, sometimes it is um, for lining up um, dies, especially if you have a whole bunch of the same ones to do. I've been definitely using my Stamparatus to line things up for die cutting when I have to do a whole bunch of it. I should do a video on how to do that. Okay. All right, so we've got our cute little owl there. We can throw this away. And now we want to add our plaid piece. So the same thing with this one, we're gonna take that same die, which is still over here with the tape on it. I'll just peel that off. We actually don't even need the tape anymore because we're not lining anything up. But in order to not waste paper, I don't need to chop off a whole section of this. What I usually do is just kind of hold it on the paper where I think I might need it. And then I'll just kind of chop out a piece and that kind of saves me. Um, I've got this whole piece and this whole side over here now. So I'll just give this a chop. There, see so I've got a ton of the paper left. All right, so I'm gonna bring my die cutting machine back in. I love this little guy. And we'll put this on there. So now we've got this little piece and I'll put this die back before I lose it. So I've been known to lose something on the desktop before if I don't put it away. All right, so now we have this piece and then what I'm gonna do is just cut it right in half. 
So how long is it? This is three and three eighths ish. So we're gonna do, yeah, then we're just gonna eyeball it. Eyeball it in the middle, that's about right. No need to measure. Nobody's gonna be comparing the front and the back and going, oh, the front is a millimeter longer than the back. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna stick that one down there, but don't stick it yet. We're just gonna kind of place it. And that will go there. So cute. And then we're gonna put this other one on the back. Now you don't have to decorate the back. I guess you could save this for another front of another one. Look at this other one. Oh, that's cute too. It looks like he's on a picnic blanket. Oh my goodness, that's cute. I'm gonna do the green one because it matches his tie, but now I'm gonna have to do a red one. That is cute. All right, so before we add this, we're gonna add some magnets. Now what I was using is this quarter inch, one millimeter um, thick neodymium magnets I got on Amazon. So I'll get two of these. If I put them too close together, they're just going to zing together. So I'll put them kind of far apart. And I'm gonna add one on the front with a glue dot. Doesn't matter which side you do, as long as the first one is done the second one will line up so i don't want to put it too close to the edge here because i want my paper to kind of fold over it and be able to stick down again so i'll take this and we'll just add some liquid glue this is pretty easy if i had some glue in my wattle i will do this one instead okay Yes. So get it sort of close to the edge. You want it to be a good seal. And this should line up perfectly with that front there. So I'm gonna hold my fingers on the sides here so I can kind of just hold it there. And then push it around. <laughs> and hold it. and lay it flat so I can get all the way around this little magnet. There. Now we can add this guy and I normally put him on dimensionals but since this is a bookmark we don't want extra bulk so he's gonna go flat on there but before we do that we want to do our stamping at the top that says my friend. So let's do that real quick. Hopefully this will be straight. Looks pretty good. And then we'll add him flat on there. I just like owls for bookmarks. I always want an owl as a project up for a bookmark. All right, so I'm gonna open this. <laughs> All right, come on. Look, got a little, I think it seeped just a smidge. All right, that's fine. All right, we're going to open this and do our stamping on the inside now. Hoot, hoot, you're so cute. Sometimes I like to just make sure that I put the sticker on straight, so I will just test it out. And see, I put this one a little bit crooked. Here, I'll show you how I fix this see how it's tipped up just a little bit when i stamp it on here i will tip the end down just a little bit in order to compensate so i will practice right now to see if i can manage it and now it's straight okay so it's facing up a little bit i'll point mine down like so there we go And now, on the opposite side, when it's closed, we will stick the other magnet. Oops. So we've got our one magnet here. And then we'll stick the other one. Just drop it on here, watch. Whoop. I love magnets. 
<laughs> and now we just have to glue the other side on there and this whole thing is done. So you watched me do the long version, watch me color and do all the die cutting. But if you were doing like a bunch of these, you could probably do a bunch of those steps all at, in a row. So you could probably do a bunch of these, maybe even for a, a craft fair or something. These would be cute. All right, so this is down and I'm going to kind of form it around that magnet. So most of this is flat except for the magnet part, I guess. And I guess you wouldn't have to add a magnet. If you have small children or if you have a pacemaker or if you have a dog that you think might eat this, skip the magnet part and just make the bookmark because it will still just slide over the top of the pages, but um, that will still work. All right, but I just love the snap of the magnet. It's just fun. All right, so here's all of our magnet bookmarks. Aren't they cute? There you have it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this product project. If you don't have a copy of the new spring catalog yet, um, and if you haven't filled out my form, it's in the description of this video here. You can request your own copy of the catalogs, including the celebration brochure where you can get the free things during January and February of 2023. Um, if you are watching at a later time and this stuff isn't available anymore, you can still make these bookmarks by using the the process that I did here. So thank you so much for watching. If you are not on my email list, go ahead and um, join that in the description there also. And um, join my Facebook group, Stamp with Delight, where we do mystery stamping every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is the project that we did this past week. This is a sidestep fun fold card using some new product too. So Thank you and have a fabulous day, guys. Bye.